regular nail clippers right now. Um, depending on the bird size, the regular nail clippers is fine. As you can see in his toe, his he's so young. His toe is actually not that thick yet and not that um, large. So using a regular nail clipper is completely fine in these circumstances. You always want to put pressure on the toe to stop any blood that would possibly come out. And then while you're still putting pressure on the toe, you put the quick stop and then you can release. Little nails were sharp. And actually, because his nails were so sharp and long while I'm clipping them, no blood is coming out anyway. So sometimes that happens too, which is nice. Let's get his other talon here. As you can see, just fast movements. Put pressure on the toe, clip, quick stop. Don't even look to see if there's blood on there. Just put the quick stop. Sometimes when you actually take the time out to see if there's blood in case you, need, you don't need quick stop, then there is blood and then the little pressure that you let go, um, then there's like a blood show. So I just, just put quick stop on every single clip. That's my recommendation. And then you just have to maneuver their toe if they try to fight you. It doesn't hurt them. Birds are not as sensitive as many people think. When it comes to their force, I mean. Always try to make the clip straight, just like that. So this was the only nail that a little blood came out. As you can see, I caught it just as it was coming out pack in some more, some extra quick stop if you need. That, that's good. I don't know if you can zoom in or get closer. You can see that it stopped the bleeding, the quick stop. Okay. All done. So I'm gonna show. Okay, as you can see here, he's trying to get his face out. So I'm gonna show you. You always need to be careful because they can come in and chomp on you really good. So I'm actually going to take control of his neck with my hand. You can see him right there. That's not hurting him at all. It's just stabilizing him so he doesn't come out of the towel and bite you. So then I'm going to straighten everything out. I can see his side right here where his wing's at. And now I'm going to hold his body and his head with my hand and take his wing out. Oh, sorry, I didn't stabilize right there. Okay, I got him, there you go, go ahead, I got him. Okay, so as you can see, these are blood feathers, these are feathers growing in, they still have blood in their shaft, and these are flight feathers. The flight feathers should not have blood in their shaft, or sometimes they even have dry blood. So the flight feathers are the feathers you want to cut. As you can see, they're a clean cut. I usually do about four. You never want to cut too much because you don't want the bird to plop on the floor or to have no flight at all. You want him to glide down. What we're taking away with these few feathers that we're cutting is we're taking away how fast he flies and how high he flies. So for instance, in the summertime, we have lots of customers whose birds fly out of the door or out of the window. That's because they still have these flight feathers and sometimes they sneak right behind you as you're leaving the house and they fly out of the house. So you're taking away how fast he flies and you're taking away how high he flies. Okay. So now I'm gonna grab Merlin on the other side. As you can see, I'm just maneuvering 
You can see right here, I'm still grabbing his head. You can see him right here. I'm still grabbing his neck. It's not hurting him at all. You can actually see him fairly, st or still breathing fairly calmly. You also want to double towel it because when you hold his neck with uh, one layer of towel, he can still reach around and bite you through the towel and that hurts. That's been done to me a few times. So here we are bringing out the wing. I'm cutting one, I'm cutting two, I'm cutting three, and I'm cutting four, and we're all done. That's all it is. And so with every bird, every bird has different strength. He might still fly up, even with me taking out these feathers, but we'll find out once he starts trying to fly. Hmm. Oh, perfect. I was just going to ask you for one. Do you want to leave them alone? Same. We have our cockatoo baby hatching. This is so exciting. He's been trying to hatch since what, yesterday? Yesterday, yeah. Yesterday? And we don't know, or Dennis doesn't know if he should help him yet. We do not want him to get stuck in the shell. Um, this is a big decision and we're trying to figure this out. But this is so cool. If you look closely, you can actually see the little black dot where he broke through the shell, not just the crack. He's a super loud baby. He's not chirping right now, but he's been chirping really loud. It's so cute. Let me see. Okay, let me open this one. Okay, ready guys? Oh my gosh. This is so nerve wracking. <gasps> there he is! Do you see him moving? Hi, little baby Malakin cockatoo. Hello. <gasps> Murph said hi. Murph's a little jealous over there. <laughs> Hi, were you trying to get out this whole time? This is so exciting. Oh, look at him. So as you can see guys, his beak was right there. His beak was right there and that's where he was trying to break through the shell. It does seem like the shell is a little bit hard. Does it feel like the shell yeah, is a little bit hard? Yeah, it's a little bit thick. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when the shell is a little bit thick, it just means there's a little bit too much calcium. And sometimes they have trouble breaking through the shell. And in, if he was still in the nest, if there were nobody to help him break through the shell, he would be dead in shell eventually because he wouldn't be able to break through the shell. So Dennis is helping him here. Look at him move. And everyone just witnessed the birth of our little baby Malek and Cockatoo. Oh, look at him. Hi. I don't want to mess with it too much because his skin is still attached to it. So I'm just trying to go where he's not. Mm. Just trying to go gentle here. The show's really hard. I can hear him. You can see this. Just gotta. Mm -hmm. I don't want the egg falling in his mouth either. Now we're gonna leave it like wow. that a little bit to see if he could break himself. This is just Look amazing. His mouth, how big it is. This is just amazing. 
he it's just already wiggled moving. himself. <laughs> Do it again. Always try to keep the humidity high so it can help them hatch. Yeah, so funny enough, this morning I woke up um, because baby William was a little fussy and I saw that the humidity was at 64. So I said, if he's been trying to break through a shell, I better hire the humidity. So I hired the humidity to 65. Oh. Now it's 56 because Dennis opened it up to help him get through his shell, but um, then Dennis increased the humidity a little bit more, I think, to 70, right? Yeah. The humidity helps helps soften the shell so the baby bird can break through. There he is, guys. It's a big beak for a baby He's a That's a big beak. That's amazing. So Dennis just took more of the shell off. And here's the baby. They say hello. Look at how chunky he is, guys. He's so cute. Look at that little leg size. The little talon size with his tiny nails. He's about to get out, guys. Watch. He is about to get out. You are about to witness him getting out. There he comes. There he is. Come on. Push. 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 That is so cool. That is the cutest thing. He's so loud. Loud and big for a baby mm -hmm. compared to lovebirds and kindness. He's three times the size. Mm -hmm. Oh, the other one is hatching. Is that the other one or let's put it no, in? No, it's part of his shell that oh, landed okay. on it. <laughs> We're just waiting here. This baby is about to stretch himself out of the shell. This is so exciting. Look at him. He's working up his energy to do that final stretch. And all from this incubator. Mm -hmm. That's a $30, $40 incubator. <laughs> You see, guys, you don't have to have nothing expensive to hatch a baby cockatoo. And the little yellow you see on there, that's his feathers. His baby down feathers right there. Over here. Oh, I see it lining his little wing. It's so cute. It's so cute. It almost feels like when I talk loud, he sort of reacts to it by breathing again, breathing hard again. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Come on, buddy. Push. There he is. So when babies hatch, they actually still have skin over their eye. That skin eventually separates. I think it's about two and a half to three weeks, right? About that, about two mm -hmm. weeks. And when they hatch, they still have some yolk on them. There you go. Come on. I want 
each other one life, one world, pirate. Yeah, you mm -hmm. still have time. Yeah. Let's go live on world pirates, guys. Let's see. Let's see. Let's put my my uh, curiosity to the test. So I said, I think he reacts to my voice when I start talking loud. Say, hello. Hi. I actually, that's all. Um, something I let a lot of customers know is that when you're trying to teach a parrot to talk, uh, they're actually like human babies and they respond to women, womenly baby talk. They respond to the feminine high pitched voice and, um, the high, uh, just in general, the high pitch. And believe it or not, when you talk baby talk to a parrot, they learn how to talk faster. There he is. <laughs> He got out, guys. Look. He got out. Yay. He finally pushed his way through. It literally was like when I was going to go upstairs and get my purse because I needed to go to Walmart. And like the second I went upstairs, Dennis is like, he got out. <laughs> so I missed him getting out. But this is him out of his shell. Did you see his little butt tail in the back? Oh, yes. Yeah, right there. Look at that, guys. That is so sweet. We will keep you updated. Stay tuned on Royal Parrot's YouTube channel and our Facebook, and we'll keep you updated on how this baby's doing. So Dennis just took more of the shell off, and here's the baby. To say hello. Look at how chunky he is, guys. This is so cute. Look at that little leg size. The little talon size with his tiny nails. He's about to get out, guys. Watch. He is about to get out. You are about to witness him getting out. There he goes. There he is. Come on. Push. 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 <laughs> that is so cool. That is the cutest thing. He's so loud. Loud and big for a baby. Mm -hmm. Compared to lovebirds and kindness, he's three times the size. Mm -hmm. Oh, the other one is hatching. Is that the other one or that's part no, of the No, it's part of his shell that oh, landed okay. on it. <laughs> We're just waiting here. This baby is about to stretch himself out of the shell. This is so exciting. Look at him. He's working up his energy to do that final stretch. And all from this incubator. Mm -hmm. That's $30, $40 incubator. <laughs> You see, guys, you don't have to have nothing expensive to hatch a baby cockatoo. And the little yellow you see on there, that's his feathers. His baby doll feathers right there. Over here. Oh, I see it lining his little wing. It's so cute. It's so cute. It almost feels like when I talk loud, he sort of reacts to it by breathing again, breathing hard again. I don't know if that's a good idea. So 
Oh, my God, I'm blurry. You can already see in his little down feathers on his head where the his crest, crest mm -hmm. is going to be. That's so cute. That's so cute. You always want to make sure, you always, always want to make sure that your hands are extremely clean, especially when dealing with babies this young. Say good morning, baby Malakin. 